All right, Mr. Bonner, would you like to take it away? Good evening, everybody. I'm so excited that you are here. Thank you for coming to learn about the rebuild. We have been waiting and the hour is now here. So we are excited for you guys to meet the team, hear about all the exciting things that they are doing. If you haven't seen me before, my name is Mr. Bonner. I am the principal of Lake Elementary School and we just are excited to welcome you to this conversation. Excellent. And since we have Mrs. Williams, maybe she can also introduce herself as our Lake um, admin team representation. Hi everyone, this is Jeannie Williams. I'm vice principal of Lake and I'm very excited to be a part of this and to um, see all the exciting um, plans that um, are in store for us. Thank you. Excellent. And my name is Ellen Mejia Hooper. I am the Director of Facilities, Planning and Construction, and I will be leading this effort from uh, the district side. We also have with us uh, Mr. Fries. And Mr. Fries, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, uh, Ellen. And um, I just want to say I'm happy to be here tonight and glad to see that we have our participants that are interested in the rebuild. And I'm excited to see the presentation as we move this project forward. Excellent. Um, and then we also have from our project team, our project manager that's on the district side, Matt. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Medeiros. Yeah, so Matt will be taking this project through construction, making sure that everything um, that the district is looking for is able to be accomplished um, within the project. Uh, we also have Tim Haley who is our uh, design manager who keeps consistency throughout our projects. So that's our district representation side. I'm going to uh, share my screen and we're going to look at um, some of the exciting things that we have in store for us for Lake Elementary and the new design. Um, this, this process has been going on for a while. So, um, Way back, the facility master plan uh, in 2016 uh, denoted Lake as the second project to be the full rebuild. Um, we are now uh, back in May. We started the process with a bridging architect. So the bridging architect is the it creates the conceptual design. It's like the footprints and the um, overall function of the uh, design and, and school that needs to come forward. Um, and we did that process with a variety of um, staff and parents and community uh, some time ago, starting last May. After that point, um, they were able to put together the basis of this design. And now we have hired our design build team. And design build might be something you're not familiar with. It's actually where we have both an architect and a contractor together as one um, entity, that one team um, that will produce both the design and construct the project. So we are right now at the green bubble. Um, we are starting the formal design process, then it'll go through permit, and then we will go through construction. But the groundwork has already been started on the design. So that's the jumping off point that this team had, um, and they've taken it a little bit further. So tonight we were looking for your input on um, the images that you see today. All right, so I want to be able, I'm, I'm proud to present the design build team to you. Uh, we have Alton Construction and QKA Architects and they are here tonight and I will transfer um, this over to them so that they can introduce themselves and introduce the project. Okay, I'll make this brief since uh, I know you're excited to see the presentation. Uh, my name is Bob Alton with Alton Construction. I'm the president and CEO. Um, thank you for this opportunity. We've been in uh, 
business about 26 years, uh, been in Richmond 21 years. So we're excited and, and we feel this is our second home. Done a lot of work uh, with the district over the years. Um, I think we have a great team, really excited about uh, QKA and the rest of our, our, our team. And just to let you know, we've, we've worked together for over 25 years and uh, over 30 projects together. So I'll pass it on to John and, and uh, let him go from there. Thanks again. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your, your busy schedules to meet with us this afternoon. My name uh, is John Dibzak, and I'm one of the partners at Quatroki Quok Architects, also known as QKA. Um, we are an architecture firm um, that specializes in educational projects that serve students in grades K through 12. Okay, that's all that we do. We specialize in that project type and we're passionate about it. We are located in Santa Rosa and in Oakland, and we've been in business now for 35 years. During that 35 years, uh, we've completed more than 1,700 educational projects and the total of those projects in dollars equates to more than $2 billion worth of new construction projects, primarily in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is where most of our work takes place. Um, we've completed several projects with West Contra Costa Unified uh, in the past, and we're grateful to have an opportunity to work with the school district again. Uh, we've also done a lot of work with Bob and his team over at Alton Construction during the, the, the past several years. Um, as well as many of the trade partners and the consultants that, that you're able to see on the, on the bottom of this chart here. So we're, we're really feeling pretty good about the team that we've assembled here. And, and we really expect that we're going to do a great job for the district and for the school. Uh, and we look forward to, to working with you and sharing our progress as we move forward. Okay, you can advance the slide, Alan, please. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about community outreach and, and feedback, uh, which was really kind of a key component in the development of the conceptual um, site plan, floor plans and phasing uh, diagrams that we are using as kind of a starting point for, for our work. And, and we really are, are, are uh, very interested in continuing the kind of process that has been started with reaching out to the community um, and involving the community as we continue to develop the design and the construction documents for this new elementary school. And there are several methods um, that we use to reach out to the community. And you can see them kind of listed there on the left. The first being the site committee meetings. And this is kind of a, a process that we've already started uh, having regular meetings with the school district, uh, really to ensure that we're there, we're meeting the goals and the expectations of the school district with regards to the scope of the project, the schedule, and the, the, uh, the, the project budget. As the project develops and we get into the more of the specifics, we'll be wanting to work with focus groups. And these focus groups will concentrate on more specific areas of the project. And some examples could be the kitchen equipment, or the library circulation desk, or the front lobby to the school. We really wanna make sure that we have all of the areas in this project working very, very well um, uh, for the school. Uh, community meetings are something that we will have like similar to the meeting that we're in now. Um, we propose to have these community meetings throughout the duration of the project where we have an opportunity to present our progress with you and get feedback from the community at large. And I think at the end of this presentation, there is a slide that will um, give you access to a questionnaire where you're able to provide some feedback to us um, on the presentation that you see today. Um, we will pre be preparing a quarterly newsletter that will go out every three months or so that will describe where we are in the project with images and texts so that you're and anyone in the community is able to kind of keep tabs on the project and know where we are at any time. 
The school district also has a great website and on part of the website, there is a, a, a there will be an area dedicated to this project where we'll further describe kind of um, the specifics of the project and the details so that everybody has um, the ability to, to see where we are. And then finally, uh, the student participation. This is, to me, this is a, this is a really big one and it's, it's an exciting part of the project. Uh, we want the students to really be excited about the transformation of their campus. Um, we also see this as a great educational opportunity for them. And so what we would like to be able to do during the course of our work here is to, to meet with Mr. Bonner and the district and in, interested teachers to see if we can develop a very, very simple program that allows us to introduce architecture, engineering, and construction to your students. Um, and our hope is that we inspire some of them to one day do what we do. And so we've done this on, on several projects in the past and it's, 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 it's always been well received and something I think that the students really get a good benefit out of doing. And I think it opens uh, a lot of eyes to future potential and opportunity. Um, so that's something that we'll want to, to be working on as well. So I'm going to pass it off to Eddie, who's going to talk a little bit about the, the design now. Thanks, John. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is Eddie Van Slambrook. I'm an architect in Studio B at Richard D. Kwok Architects. Um, and, like, and I'll be talking about the design. So the first slide we see here is kind of our general uh, look and feel for the, for the, pro for the project. Um, and when we first started the design, one of the things that we really uh, felt strongly about is bringing a connection to nature uh, into the project. Um, we did this by proposing uh, materials, colors, and shapes that evoke nature, um, and more specifically, the butterfly. You can see we have kind of an orange and yellow color scheme for some key areas, uh, some of the shape of the roots, and the texture of the materials to evoke other uh, natural elements. Um, we also wanted to uh, bring in features that speak to the Lake Elementary School's unique identity and values. And you can see that we've <laughs> taken some of the, the graphics from the, the core value and mission statement and in, included that right onto the face of the building. And again, next slide, please. So here you can see the, the, the layout of the camp, the proposed campus. Um, and it's really organized around a central main street that we call it. And what this is is a uh, pedestrian thoroughfare that connects all of the buildings, uh, which are which is also protected from cover with roof coverings for uh, to protect from rain and, and weather. And really at the center of, of the campus is what we call the heart of the campus. And this is like a large open plaza space that will uh, the students will be eating lunch. They have just adjacent to the NPR building. Um, it's also a central gathering space um, for uh, events and, and uh, impromptu meetings. The admin building is at the, the front entry point for the campus. And this will house all of the offices and meeting spaces for the teach for this uh, administration and teachers. It also has the library uh, and library rooms and also the community uh, public meeting room as well. And just below that are the two classroom neighborhoods. Um, each building will house the, that, the building on the left will house grades one through three and the building on the right will house grades four through six. And all of those are organized around a large open uh, central space with an adjacent project room. And so those the students will be able to uh, break out into different areas as needed for their work throughout the day. And then going to the other side of the main street, or sorry, the heart of the campus, we have the TK and Kinder space, which these are will uh, have uh, TK and uh, transitional kindergarten and kindergarten rooms, as well as a 
dedicated preschool uh, space. Um, and just a side note on this on this space is that we are actually still in developing uh, this building to uh, make sure that we're meeting all the future needs for the school so that this this building may change in the future. And then to the south of that, we have the MPR, which it has a stage and gym space and also the kitchen and servery rooms next to that. Um, and then just, yeah, to the next slide, thank you. And so here you can see a bird's eye view of that same of the campus. Uh, looking down, you can see we're, um, we're looking straight ahead at the office and library building. Um, and one of, the, one of the special features that we're looking at is these, um, is the new canopies that, that are highlighted in yellow. And these are really to signify different uh, elements of the campus as welcoming uh, or, or identify certain areas that uh, lead you into the space. Um, so we have the front door space right there is that the, at the admin, which has that large open canopy. Um, and then for each of the teaching neighborhoods, we have the two front porches, which give a give a welcoming space into those classroom areas. And then under the at the NPR, we have a very large open canopy uh, that protects for uh, from weathers for outdoor dining. And then uh, on the kinder that they kind of have their own little campus within within the main campus, but they do have that little they we, they do have a gateway that connects between their space and the main thoroughfare uh, of the main street. Um, next slide, thank you. So here you can see a, a 3D image of the of the main entry. Um, once again, we have the metal texture, uh, which provides sort of a natural feel to the to the campus with uh, contrasting that with some really brightly colored spaces that were providing a very welcoming yet secure entry to the campus. Um, next slide, please. So here we're looking at the, the heart of the campus um, and looking across to the, the MPR building. And you can see here we have a, a connection between that space and the with these large openings that roll up doors that will the students can flow in and out and give us that indoor and outdoor connection between the spaces. And then just to the right is the kinder space that uh, will have a view out into the, into the main part of the campus. Next slide. So here we have some views of the interior of the space. Um, and one of the things we wanted to not only have that connection to nature on the exterior, but also bring that to the interior as well. And so the view on the top here, we're looking directly at the, at the large uh, open space at the center of all of the classrooms. This will have a uh, raised ceilings with some special light fixtures and tall windows that'll bring lots of natural light into the space. Um, and we also have uh, little uh, cubbies around, scattered throughout that, sh that have different breakout areas for the students. So some of them will have work tables that students can gather around. And some are more like couches where students can sit and read quietly. And uh, just to let you know, oh, sorry, you go back one. Uh, just to let you know, if you wanna scan the, um, the, the barcode there, this, that'll take you to a link that um, you can actually go onto the web internet and it'll, uh, you can look around in the space and you can, zoom in on different areas that you want to see. So it'll be the same image, but you'll be able to, to move around in it. All right, and then with that, I'll turn it over to John Reno from Gates, and he's going to talk about the, the landscape design. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah, my name is John Reno. I'm with Gates and Associates, your landscape architects. <clears throat> We're excited to help create exceptional environments for your children. This first landscape slide shows the overall campus master plan, with the top being north and a new teacher access road from Manchester Avenue to the south. The images here and on the following sheets are intended to be inspirational and used uh, to brainstorm ideas. They're not 
They're not exactly what will be implemented, but we are aiming to provide you with the best possible environments for learning and play while maintaining the spirit of these images. With that in mind, let's take a look at this campus that blurs the line between inside and out. Um, there is a lot of green here, right? Well, that's intentional. This campus is inspired by nature and filled with it, from the organization down to the materials. So let's now talk just briefly about how it's organized. Students enter the campus from the north, from 12th Street, oh, if you go back, yeah, you enter the campus from the north, from 12th Street by vehicle, 11th Street by bus, both have pedestrian accesses. Uh, you can also walk in from the south along Manchester Avenue, and there's a gate from the far east. Teachers and service vehicles enter from the south along Manchester Avenue. There's a central corridor that has been mentioned before, or Main Street, and it's lined on either side by buildings, outdoor classrooms, courtyards, social spaces, paths, exercise, and play spaces. At the center of the buildings, the, multi, the covered multi-purpose space and gathering lawn is the social heart of the campus, as Eddie alluded to. So now let's zoom in to a few areas and take a closer look. Here, uh, we see classrooms for grades one through six. Oh, excuse me, um, different order. So here we see the pre-K through kinder classrooms and activity areas, as well as a hint of the sports courts. Uh, entry into the kinder is from the bus drop-off area um, and from Main Street. Pre-K has its own controlled entry off the parking lot. Uh, innovative, nature-inspired play structures and experiences will be available for everyone, likely with bold, energizing colors, patterns, and textures. Fun features will likely include play structures, music instruments, swings, slides, a tricycle track, and even a sensory wall, just to name a few. Move on. Uh, here we see classrooms uh, for grades one through six uh, to the south of Main Street. <clears throat> to the north are the library and administrative offices. The main entry for vehicular drop-off for students is at the very far right. Bus drop-off is to the left of the library, which leads directly into the heart of the campus. There is also a public path along the far south side of the classrooms that provides um, pedestrian pass-through without having to go onto the campus proper. Uh, an exciting feature of your new campus are the outdoor classrooms. They're between buildings at the east and west ends of the classrooms and along Main Street. They have unique nature-based themes incorporated into teaching boards and in the paving. There'll be a range of, of seating opportunities also for groups and individuals. They'll be playful, modern, colorful, and flexible. Next slide. Um, here we see the multi-purpose room and kitchen at the upper right with the teacher's parking lot beneath. Main Street enters the picture from the north with the large outdoor classroom or amphitheater beneath it for larger gatherings and events. Play and activity areas for grades one through six are largely at the, at the end of Main Street. They will be big, big fun and likely outshine the local parks. So get ready, all you parents out there. Uh, we intend uh, there to be a more obvious natural look to the structures and experiences at this play, playground. I think it's the images represented here. Fun features will likely include climbing and adventure structures, musical instruments, swings, a peace path, kitchen gardens, educational boards, rolling hills, just to name a few. So I could go on and on about how exciting this campus is going to be, but we need to continue on to others. So thank you so much. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Noel Stenberg with Alton Construction, and I will be seeing the project through uh, design phase and construction phase from start to finish. And as you can see on the timeline, it's about 30 months, and we are just now starting the design. So uh, once that's run through, uh, 
DSA approvals, agency approvals, we will start construction next spring, spring or summer. Phase 1A will be started and we will be completing phase 1A approximately the end of 2023. And we will start phase 1B, which runs into about spring of 2025. Next slide, please. As you can see, phase 1A is on the, on the east side, on the right side of the screen. That's the new administration building and grades one through three and grades four through six classroom buildings. Phase 1B is the multipurpose room and kinder wing and playground areas. Phase 2A is the playground, blacktop, and soccer field, synthetic turf. So we're excited to be part of this amazing new project and uh, looking forward to starting construction. And just so we're clear, um, we do plan on constructing this project while students are on site. We have come up with um, various temporary uh, concepts of how to be able to accommodate the school population. And we're working closely with your site administration to make sure that all functions are um, still able to, to happen, although they might be happening in a little bit different fashion than you're used to. Um, as you might notice, phase 1A is um, mostly a empty area right now, so um, we're able to start construction over there with minimal impact onto your current campus. Um, once phase 1A is done, we'll actually move the students into the new uh, buildings, so they'll be able to use the new buildings while we're under construction for phase 1B. Um, and so there's going to be a little bit of flipping back and forth, but we are always going to make sure that we have the um, proper safety between the construction zone and the kids space and uh, make sure that we maintain uh, that throughout the project. Um, so we have a very experienced team here who is used to working on school sites and knows um, that our number one priority is the student and staff safety. Um, so we will make sure that we accomplish uh, this project with hopefully as minimal impact um, to the educational process as possible. And uh, as was stated earlier, you know, this really is an opportunity for students to see construction um, up close, which is, um, really kind of exciting, um, especially for those of us who are in this industry. So moving on to the next slide, uh, we were hoping for your feedback tonight so that we've created two separate surveys, one in English, one in Spanish. Uh, you see both of them here. You can either type in uh, the code underneath or the, the website or um, scan the QR code uh, to gain access to those. You can also put questions in the chat um, if you have any. Um, is the noise impact on children's focus? So one of the things that we're, that we're going to um, that, that works out pretty well with this is that we do have a pretty good separation from the learning areas to where the construction's going to be. Um, so while there will be noise, um, the ability for that to not be as, um, it won't be any more dramatic than the train is already. <laughs> um, but uh, we will keep an eye on that as time goes um, on and try to mitigate it as much as possible. Um, so if there are other questions, you can pop it into the chat, but also feel free to scan um, these and fill out the survey. Uh, we also have a project website page set up. Um, it's a little bit of a, of a chore to type that um, in, but you can also sc uh, scan this QR code. Um, and we will also work with um, Mr. Bonner to see if we can get it as a link on your um, school's website as well. Um, 
but we will be updating this throughout the project. We'll put, when we're in construction, we'll put up to date uh, construction photos so that you can see what's going on. While we're in design, um, any of these presentations along with the video of tonight um, will be posted uh, so that um, you guys can see this throughout the process and, and be up to date on what's happening. Going on to the next slide, we also have a little commercial break from the city of San Pablo. They asked us if we would um, would bring forward uh, a really important program that they're also doing, which is the Safe Routes to School. Um, so while we're working on the campus, they're working on getting your kids from their homes to the school site safely, uh, especially for our walkers, bikers, and rollers, um, which would be skates, scooters, et cetera. Um, so they have a survey of their own um, that you can fill out to talk about if you see any um, hazards on your walk or ride to school, um, you can fill out their survey. And um, they are also doing a demonstration on September 24th. So at Broadway and 14th, you can go there and they'll have um, tables set up and they'll have a couple different um, versions of what Broadway can look like um, as far as planter boxes, um, separating different lanes for pedestrian or bike access. Um, so it should be a fun event. And as you can see, there's chances to win gift cards, bicycles, helmets, and more. Um, so everybody bring your mask and um, show up and, and see what that's all about. That should also be um, a fun event, but we are um, really excited that not only are we looking at the campus, but um, the city's also looking at uh, better ways for uh, all of our families and community to be able to make it to our school site and home safely. Um, so these are really great programs. Um, so if you can be involved in those as well, that would be wonderful. Um, we were gonna leave it with our engagement slide again, so that if you had feedback, you can take a moment to um, get these QR codes or these links or also put something in the Q&A. Um, we would be happy to answer uh, any questions you have if you have something for there. Uh, also, Mr. Bonner or Mrs. Williams, do you have any um, additional announcements? Please tell a friend. So if you notice that a parent is not on here and you see them during the carpool or you see them during the drop off, please let them know that there's opportunities to get their feedback towards the project and we welcome them. We will definitely post on Class Dojo and also send out on Peach Jar, but word of mouth always works best. So please make sure that you're sharing, sharing, sharing and talking about this because we want to make sure our community is a part of this project. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. And we have a hand up, so I will um, push the allow to talk button. Hello, Hi. this is Heno. Hi, this is Heno Vava Calloway. I'm a former mayor city council for the city of San Pablo. And I was in office uh, in 2016. And before then, when we, you know, worked together with the district to, um, with all of our schools. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I've also been involved, we still have a committee with the city, uh, prevention of childhood obesity. And when I heard the thing about the kitchen, I, it brought, you know, it reminded me of that initiative that we have. And so for the kitchen, obviously to provide healthy meals and also space to have educational space to learn about healthy eating and healthy living, uh, uh, you know, classes to teach our children about healthy eating. So uh, the kitchen brought that up to me. Uh, that was one comment. And um, the second one is the air distribution to prevent COVID-19 spread now. You know, it's like a new experience to all of us. Is that in the construction or in the design, is that being taken into account? And number three is how many parking spots uh, will the school have? Because 
all of our schools have a problem with parking and then dropping off kids and all that. So those would be my concerns that I kind of just want to raise today since we're in the design phase of the project. So th those are my comments and questions. Thank you. And you. I do know that the um, that we have done consideration of both our ventilation system and parking, but I'll pass it off to our design team to, to discuss that further. Um, I can, I can go, I'll ahead, take uh, go ahead, Eddie. I'm sorry, I was muted. I was talking, but muted. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead, John. Well, so yeah, the, you know, the, the COVID-19 and what that means to um, schools and indoor environments is, is really at the forefront now of just about everything that we're doing. Um, and so it is being taken into account. We are going to make sure that we can do all that we can to minimize um, the spread of, of, of uh, germs and things like that inside the classroom. We're at a very early stage yet, so I don't have a lot of specific information other than to say that, yes, that we are definitely paying very close attention to this. I don't know the number of the parking stalls was, was the, the third question. Um, Correct. I believe there's 70, but I'm not, I, I don't know for sure. So, um, but we can get back in and keep that in mind. I do know that we are offering more parking than is currently on site. Um, we um, are also working to create multiple drop-off areas so that, and, and eliminating the cross traffic that comes from having 11th and 12th kind of feed into the same parking lot. Um, so overall, we have been um, having many conversations about how to best uh, monitor the flow of the parking and try to get a cleaner drop-off lane versus um, folks that are looking to um, park. Uh, and also trying to pull the staff to the other side um, takes another group of people away from um, the main entry space. Uh, so all of those things together were efforts to be able to improve the traffic around the school site. Have you considered working with the city of San Pablo to make either 11th or 12th a one way uh, to, for that flow of the, of the traffic for the school? Uh, we have had conversations with the city of San Pablo about the, uh, the traffic flow. Um, and the best approach to that, um, because the 11th and 12th are both, um, they're, they're residential streets that have residents on, on both sides. It's very difficult to create a one-way street there because there is no actual connector street um, between. And so when our parking uh, lots are closed, they yes. wouldn't be able to get in and out to their house. Okay. Um, so that's normally frowned okay. upon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I get it. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. But we have we have been talking to the city of San Pablo and there was a traffic study done um, about how our, our families get to um, get to our campuses. So all of those things are being taken into account. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. We're happy in, you were here our, today. In our, in our, just to add to the, the food and nutrition uh, comment, we have a, uh, a dedicated consultant that uh, helps design the kitchen, who uh, is just going to just about to start reaching out to the district's uh, nutrition staff to uh, develop the, the food program for the school. That's wonderful. And may I ask that the city of San Pablo, because I belong to their uh, prevention of childhood obesity uh, committee that the council appointed some of us um, to involve, you know, involve us because we that's one of our main initiatives that we have. Uh, thank you. Please consider inviting by inviting us to. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Um, any other, um, anybody else that would like to raise their hand or um, if you, or uh, put a question in the chat? All right. Seeing none, I am going to thank you again for coming. We really appreciate it um, and are happy that you were here.
and uh, look forward to seeing how this uh, project develops throughout um, the next month and year um, to be able to get us to what everybody wants is which is construction and move in. So thanks again. And as with Mr. Bonner said, um, please share, please um, talk to people, let them know that we're here and we're listening. Um, and uh, we hope to uh, meet again in the coming months. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night.